Hello there in YouTube land, and hello Brandon, who is right behind me, right there on the screen. See, right? I no good with this kind of like reversal type of thing. Anyway, so his channel's name is Skinslip, and you're gonna see me uh, put the put the link down below. So what I'm doing here is I'm doing a conscious entry for uh, Brandon Scavenger Hunt. I really love this idea. It is awesome. So uh, as I was watching this video, it's been like 17, 18 minutes long. So make sure you check it out. Make sure you go over to Brandon's channel, sub to even if you don't want to like do the contest doesn't matter sub to the channel watch the videos trust me you'll be watching more and you'll get hooked and uh soon you'll be beating me and i'll be like sit on my where i am right now because i think i've gotten to a plateau spot where i'm gonna be comfortable for a little bit yeah i'm not gonna lie uh, anyways so he's got over 600 subscribers he's really on a roll he's like he's part of the cathode ray actually he's hosting the cathode ray most of the time now and uh <clears throat> What we're going to do today is, I'm blanking out. I like started this video twice because I was like, I'm totally, I'm going to totally go gonzo on this. I'm going to not blank out the second time. Totally did. It's past two in the morning. So I'm going to do the video with the, uh, with the 10 scavenger items. Plus I've got a bonus thing that I'm going to do at the end of the video because, well, I want to make my video stand out. I want to be awesome. I want to do something awesome. So try that guys. When you're doing this video, just Add something a little bit, a little bit of awesomeness right to the end of it. So uh, that's what I'm going to do. Just a thought, just a theory, something you can do. Throw in there, maybe, maybe not, hmm, maybe. Okay. Anyway, here we go. I've got a lot of caffeine today. Does it show it? Oh yeah. So ten things, and let's go and uh, like get to the uh, items so I can actually uh, say why I'm doing what I'm doing. So luckily, I put a list down here. So I'm already a subscriber. Make at least one entry. Must own the movie. Must use only one movie per item on the scavenger hunt. Every video scavenger gets injury gets you one entry. Every newly created video review of a scavenger hunt item is posted as a comment gets an entry. Hmm, isn't it? That's inter interesting. You can do it inside the United States or Canada. Agree to pay shipping costs to your country. So if you're living in like Australia or something like that, which is understandable, I've had to. Uh, I've done contests before where I had to send stuff out, and uh, there are times when I spent like a lot of money sending stuff out when I. I uh, thought, so like, okay, the next time I do a contest, I'm going to pick one expensive prize or pick, like, a gift card. And if I ever reach the uh, mythical thousand uh, that uh, so many of you guys out there have already reached, uh, then that's where my next contest thing is going to go at, and I have an idea. So here we go. Number one. A film with a number in the title. Hopefully I'm the only person picking this one, so I want to choose something different. So... Miss 45. I love this movie. Actually, I really, really love this movie. It's a revenge film. Uh, it's one that I really do enjoy. Ed Freire directed this. Uh, this is a great one. It's by uh, Draft House Films. Uh, Draft House Films? Yep, yeah, Draft House Films. That's what they got right there. So, these are cool. This is number 16, the Draft House Films collection. This one was uh, gifted to me by my good friend Sammy Fowler 5 and 7. So, uh, there, Miss 45 is an amazing one. So we'll open it up here. Because so, I want you to see what this looks like. Uh, not that hard. So it's got like a booklet. And it's got a bigger booklet now than some Criterions have. Have you seen some of the recent Criterions? They uh, actually got like this little thin booklet. Kind of like things when movies first came out. Like those MGM things. That were like kind of small. And like, it'd be like two or four pages type of thing. Anyway, so number one. Miss 45. Love this movie. Awesome film. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Uh, Brandon, I'm sure you've seen this one. But if you haven't, you'll like it. Next up is a, a movie with a color in the title, right? That's, that's the second one is. Yep, so, it, and this is one of my favorite Criterions that I own in my collection. You know, ironically, actually, yeah, this was gifted by Sammy. Uh, it is Black Narcissus. I love this film. The, it's a Powell Pressburger film. If you're uh, familiar with Powell Pressburger, you know that how, how gorgeous their movies are. Uh, this is just amazing. The uh, Deborah Carr stars in this. Uh, Kathleen Bryan is amazing. Uh, Flora Robson, uh, just an incredible, incredible film. These uh, nuns go up to this. Uh, oh God, where's it at? Uh, I'm trying to remember now. Someone else hasn't seen this, but I watched it like four times on the row when I watched it. Uh, they go up to this area to basically uh, kind of like to try to, to bring this. Uh, oh my God, I'm totally blanking on this right now. Uh, they go up to this area to like kind of like bring like religion to this like remote area type of thing and it's really hard uh there's a they have like 
a lot of different like uh, trials and tribulations throughout it and some that you could expect and some that you don't expect and a one nun goes extremely crazy a yeah, really cool sequence actually for that uh beautiful scenes and uh they're basically doing the trying to do the impossible and it really literally does seem to be the impossible there's kind of a love interest type thing going on here uh it, it's very twisted in the way that it's done uh, it's just a gorgeous film and black narcissus is my number two next up is a film you discovered from another youtuber it's not so much that i discovered this from another youtuber this was really hard for me i watch a lot of movies uh and a lot of them i work like through youtubers some like some tv shows and some like stuff like that i discovered through uh, a bunch of youtubers so what i wanted to do was pick basically a director whose movie i watched because of a youtuber and uh, that was lauren lauren g uh rom's reviews so basically uh I down on Rob Zombie a lot. I mean, a lot. And uh, especially because those Halloween films were really, really not good. Especially part two. That, that yeah. Not good. Lords of Salem. Uh, this is one that I hemmed and hot about. And uh, it was because of Lauren, actually, that I actually went out and uh, watched this. And uh, actually, this is probably, uh, I'm not going to lie, this is my favorite Rob Zombie film. But this is one most people hate. But it, it took a lot of chances and did a lot of different stuff. I'm sure there's some, like, some stuff in here, like, especially near the end, is really strange, really different. But I like that. I like strange. I like different. Uh, this is the closest thing that I've seen Rob Zombie do to uh, what seems like an original idea, something that really uh, that really takes some chances. I mean, like with House of Thousand Corpses, I, you know, as fun as that movie was, and like with Devil's Rejects, they were both fun films, but they were safe films. I know that, that it doesn't seem really, like, but yeah, it was a lot of like 70s stuff that was thrown in there. I was part of some Texas Chainsaw in there. I was part of some Hills of Eyes. It was like a smorgasbord of movies that Rob Zombie had watched when he was younger. And, uh, you know, th not saying they're bad movies. It's just they didn't go far enough, maybe. And I know that he wanted to do something different and he wanted to do something unique. And I really think that he did something kind of unique, kind of cool with this. You know, a lot of everybody's going to love it. Some people are going to say, well, it's part of Rosemary's Baby. It's part of extra all this stuff. But no, it's just, just a really different, cool film. I liked it. And uh, thanks, Lauren. So, uh, you made me look at uh, Rob Zombie in a, you know, in another light and actually watch this. And uh, with that being said, I still don't like Rob, Rob Zombie's Halloween too. Don't like it. Next up is a film, a film with a killer vehicle. So there are two movies, that are, they're the franchise films, and I didn't know which one to go with. But uh, I decided for the killer vehicle, I had to go with... Uh, God, what's the car called in this movie too? The Van the Vanquisher. I just loved the car in this film. I love the movie, uh, but the car that he drives around is just so badass. And uh, one of the many that I watched and loved, and here it is right here, Mad Max. Love Mad Max. I love this movie. I really do. This is a really cool movie. This is my favorite in the well, not anymore. My favorite now is actually the uh, the new one. That I think that's awesome. That is amazing. I don't have it. Can't use that. But this was one of my favorite. Like the car in this one is the first time I really actually noticed cars so much. And uh, I know the sequel is thought of like for having cars and like all this kind of cool car stuff in it. But this one here is one where I noticed the car was kind of for me. So uh, that's what I'm going to use. That's my killer car one. I actually thought of using Batman, the 1989 one. But when you put it Batman, I was like, oh, I can't use Batman. Because, and you said, you know, I will use what somebody else says. But uh, I want to be one of the first people on here and use like the stuff that you use as well. But. Mine would have been the 1989 Batman when I my second chase, which is this one right here, uh, because I just really dug the car in this one. So post apocalyptic movies, uh, uh, yeah, I was going to choose Day of the Dead, but uh, <clears throat> so we do have a mindset like on those things. But I chose Road Warrior because I do think this is really cool. Uh, this is not at all like the original Mad Max. It's like it has Mel Gibson. That's where the a lot of the uh, it ends for me. Well, like. Uh, as in, like, uh, these films are like. But I do love this film. And uh, it's very much a post-apocalyptic film. I thought about, like, different things. What I really thought about going with, like, uh, was, like, but I didn't really think it was post-apocalyptic, but it just was just different. Uh, there were just so many, like, different things. I thought, like, Cubics, like, uh, Hot Orange, but that wasn't post-apocalyptic. It was in the future, but it was, like, could have been in the nearby future. could have been any time. Uh, so I really had to go with uh, Road Warrior. It's just one I watched recently. And that I, when I was getting ready to watch, like, uh, go to the, see the new Mad Max film. And, uh, but I really dig this one. So you wanted a, a slasher film without a franchise or a sequel. So here we go. Uh, this was pretty easy for me. I actually 
pick something up right away. And I'm not sure why I did. There's like other choices there, but I like graduation day. I hated this move when I first saw it. I really did. And it was only through like subsequent viewings that I actually kind of grew on me and became one of those kind of like uh, little favorites though because of certain sequences in it that I really like. I like certain things that the director did. I like the way that he had the type of uh, female lead that they used in this was a different female lead. It was an older female lead as opposed to the others. There's more of a, there's like a story going on that never really got delved into it like enough for me, but there was really truly a, a deeper story going on with a lot of the characters. The vil the bad guy was kind of cheesy and stuff like that, and a lot of the stuff he did, but the, you know, stop watching all that. But I really did dig this, and this is an 88 Films release. I really love their stuff. This has a great documentary, Screen Queens Horror, Heroines Exposed. So uh, definitely check out Graduation, the 88 Films edition. This is awesome. This one you must have. A film directed by a female director. Really easy for me, actually. Extremely easy for me. And, uh, which one to choose? Well, I'm going to choose the first one this time. Like, uh, the original Slumber Party Massacre uh, by uh, it was Amy Jones. Did I get this right? Yep, by Amy Jones. So here we go. The Slumber Party Massacre, fantastic little film. One of uh, Brink Stevens actually might be her first, one of her first films. I know that much. She gets killed. What? Well, she's one of the first victims, if not the first victim of the film. Um, no, she's one of the first anyway, and she gets killed by the driller killer. It's a very fun film, very cheesy, uh, but it's supposed to be cheesy. It's kind of like a almost like satire parody type thing. But they made it, like, they didn't take it too far into that direction. And they kept it, like, as a cool little slasher film. So I really like this one. I love this franchise. You know, I know you got it because it's Roger Cor from Classic Collection. You have got all those. So, the movie's so bad that it's good. For me, this was a no-brainer. Silent Night, Deadly Night 2. Is, this is in no way ever going to be considered a fantastic film or a classic but it's a classic schlock film it's a classic bad film and one of the best bad movies ever people talk about troll 2 and how bad that is they talk about uh, the room how bad that is uh, but i think this gets a short shift this is really a cool bad movie the acting in this is just as bad it's not in power as being on bad as troll 2 i'm not quite as bad as a room acting wise because i don't think anything can be as bad as the room but i don't own the room so that's why i've not shown that one but i do on Silent Night, Deadly Night 2 it's a great one and i like this uh, set so, next up was a, a film that you like the music from more than the movie itself. And I had actually thought about doing this one for the killer vehicle one. But you can't use one twice. And I really wanted to put this one in the soundtrack. When I saw this movie in the theater, originally I did not like it very much. I loved the music. I thought the movie was cheesy as hell. The movie's grown on me, but I do like the music more than I like the film. And uh, that movie is... Maximum Overdrive. I'm a huge ACDC fan. So when I heard that uh, Stephen King was doing a movie, I was like, yes! When I heard that ACDC was going to be providing the soundtrack, I was like, yes, again! When I saw it, I was like, what the hell am I watching? Uh, is this a great movie? No. By no stretch of the imagination, is this a great movie? It's a cult movie. It's a classic movie. It's kind of like so bad. It's kind of good. Stephen King coked out his mind when he made this movie. He doesn't even remember making it. Uh, but a lot of us love it because like, it's in our, you know, because of this one thing. Green Goblin truck. The only time you're ever going to see Green Goblin look actually like the Green Goblin from the comic books on the cinematic screen. Here you go. This is your chance to see Green Goblin looking like he should look. See that? This is not what he looked like in Amazing Spider-Man 2 or the original Spider-Man film. God, no. I wish. But um, this is a way to see him looking like the Green Goblin. <laughs> but great soundtrack. I mean, even if you don't like this movie at all, you can sit down, you can put it on, you can listen to ACDC soundtrack. That is so amazing. Uh, if you want to get the uh, soundtrack of it, actually it's a Who Made Who album. Uh, pick that up. It's really, really good if you don't have it. Not on iTunes. Please. Get a CD. <clears throat> Just saying, guys. A film that's undervalued and underseen. I'm not sure how undervalued or underseen this is right now, but I don't hear a lot of people talking about it. So, I'm going to use it. Actually, I had to have one choice. Oh, damn. Yeah, because this, this was ran into a comic book and it was like cartoon series as well. But the movie originally, I still think, was undervalued and underseen. Do I want to use this? Yeah, okay, we'll use it. Check it. And that is Black Dynamite. I really dig this film. I think that not enough people have seen this movie here. And, uh, you know, forget the cartoon series. I've never actually seen the cartoon series. Or uh, the comic books, which may be good. I haven't read them either. Uh, but 
I was here with my kids and uh, my uh, better half one night. We were, we were watching a different movie. We had rented a film, and we saw a trailer for this film here, Black Dynamite. We we're like, what the hell is this movie? I watched the trailer. I said, hey, isn't that the movie we saw at Future Shop? So him was like, it is, and we're going to Future Shop. So we immediately went to Future Shop and picked this up here. Actually, we picked up a DVD originally, <clears throat> and we came home. We bought it. We bought it. We came home. We forgot about the movie that we were going to watch. It had the Black Dynamite trailer on, and we watched Black Dynamite. We had a hilarious, hilarious time. We loved it. It was just amazing. And uh, later on, uh, we would go get the uh, Blu-ray, and I actually gave the DVD to my son. Love this movie. I can put this on any time I watch it. It's just so fun, so cheesy. I'm a real big Black Exploitation fan. This gets all the Black Exploitation stuff in there. I'm going to get you stuff. There's another great one, but uh, this is the one I'm choosing. So I said I was going to do something else, something kind of different. Uh, so what I'm going to do is give you one, two, three, four, five actual movie Blu-ray recommendations. So I look at stuff that you may not have or you may not have thought about, but here's five choices. You might have them, <clears throat> but... Uh, Basically, and five choices for anybody that's watching that I think there are Blu-rays that deserve to be in your collection that maybe you didn't think about or maybe you passed over or maybe you just didn't know it even existed. So here we go. A couple of these are not for uh, younger viewers uh, because they have some uh, overt, well, some, a couple of them here have really, really some nudity stuff in them. So I do, and I want to get to those. I will say, you know, younger viewers, don't don't buy this movie. But uh, <clears throat> actually, a couple of them. But they're really cool films. But this is one of them, actually. Uh, Burt Lancaster is a swimmer. I really do dig this film. It's put up by Grinders releasing. Uh, it's just a really cool film. It's uh, very different. This is not a horror film, that's for sure. And it's got an over two and a half hour documentary on here. And it's really... Uh, I can't explain it. I mean, it's a guy who basically goes swimming from pool to pool uh, to get somewhere. And it's... I just really liked it. I mean, I'm not sure what exactly I loved about it, but it was such a well-done film. I think Burt Lancaster did an amazing job in it. So, Swimmer. Right now it's releasing, so you know it's going to be really expensive. Next up was one that I really didn't think I was going to like really like a lot, although I did like the subject matter, and I did like the uh, the artist. It was 144 minutes long, and I thought, oh, this is going to bore the hell out of me. But Hin said, you know, I want to watch this. I'm a really big fan of them. So let's check out the documentary. So it was another documentary. It was like an hour long. We can watch that one. She said, now let's watch the Blu-ray one. So I was like, oh. But I did, and it was fascinating. And I, and I sat down, and I was glued to the screen for the, the complete 144 minutes. And that is uh, Marley. This is just a great, great film by Kevin McDonald. It's an amazing documentary. It's really good. It really shows the uh, uh, shows Marley. And, and, you know, it's good and it's bad. And it's it's just really if you like the music, the man, if you know just uh, really, if you like really good documentaries, Marley, I really strongly recommend it. It's a great film. Next up is one you probably got, but I had to put it in there here anyway. It's very cheesy. Uh, it's out there. It's strange. It's weird. And uh, there's another movie. Actually, I'm, this is one ties with another one, which I'm not going to get in my collection because it's over there somewhere. And that is uh, Father's Day. Father's Day is just really. This is a batshit crazy film. This is not for young people. Uh, it's about this killer, uh, this guy whose father was murdered by the serial killer that rapes father, rapes and kills fathers. Uh, I, I'm not joking. He, it's really weird. Uh, it's very grindosy. It's a soundtrack. This one here is an edition you should get. This one has like a. It's got the Blu-ray, the DVD. It's a bonus soundtrack as well. Astron Six. Is the other movie to get with this, by the way. When you get this movie, uh, make sure you get the Astron 6. It's, uh, it's a collection of Astron 6 short films. And these short films were like a World ones. I think there's a Father's Day trailer on the short films. It's really good. Uh, it's something you can sit down and watch. And you would just laugh your ass off. It's such fun. Uh, I think I recommended this to uh, some people. I think uh, Nail County Empty Theater. Uh, Nathan, I basically, I, this is one of the ones I recommended to him. And I'm not sure if he ever forgave me for that. Uh, but I know he did watch it, and I think he enjoyed it. He had fun with it anyway. Uh, I recommend this to a lot of people, actually, uh, that actually end up picking up. It's a fun film. <clears throat> and it's not a great cool cover. I think the cover on the inside is not so cool, though. Let me show you. It's very, like, very 70s grind, actually. Grand Housey. Like, these other two are not for children at all. These are have very adult themes to them. Uh, but they are, I found them both really cool films. <clears throat> and uh, first up is uh, one by... Uh, Severon films. I don't have very much Severon in my collection. I gotta have to remedy, remedy, blah, blah, remedy that. And that is House on Straw Hill. Uh, with Udo Kair, uh, Linda Hayden, and uh, Fiona Richard, 
Richmond? Yeah. Point of Richmond. So I just really did dig this movie. It's, it's slower. There's a lot of like overt sexuality in this film. There, a lot of nudity. Uh, there's a sequence with the girl and the. It's a solo sequence. We'll go with that. There is like uh, some disturbing scenes in here as well. But aside from that, there's something really cool in here when you get it. So you get it and you like you watch this movie. You're like, man, it's kind of House on Strike Hill. It's got the Blu-ray. It's got the DVD. But then you see this. That you see this and this totally blows your mind and you watch it and you're like this is fucking awesome and that is banned the status videos this is a great great documentary uh right up there with my uh video nasties i got the second volume done the first one yet but i have seen the first one uh, it is such a great documentary really great and it comes free with house on Strike hill which is also a cool movie so uh, a different movie a strange movie but a cool movie nonetheless so i wanted to get a box that's something different kind of unique and i thought about like criterion or got one like the wire, something like that, but I don't have the wire and Blu ray. I got a DVD, so what do I, what am I going to use? What can I use that you might like that's a little different? And uh, this is one that was got, that was given to me um, for my birthday by a good, good very good friend of mine, uh, Parson Burger. So uh, if you watch Matthew's videos, then uh, Matthew, not my son, but Matthew Parson Burger, uh, then you, uh, you know, he's got a lot of really cool stuff. I'm sure this is one that he would never pick up for himself. But he was nice enough to pick it up for me. He knew that it was one that I really wanted that I didn't think I was going to get because my better half would not have picked it up for me. And that is uh, <laughs> Tinsel Brass's uh, Maestro Erotic Cinema. And it's got Cheeky, Black Angel, Private, and Mono More. And uh, Cheeky is one that I really do like. I really love that film. Um, and it's very much exploitation type stuff. You know, it's very soft core erotica. Uh, some of it in the later stuff seems almost more harder core erotica, which I didn't expect. Uh, but uh, movies like uh, a lot of them seem like really. He really shoots the film really well, and he uh, casts especially early on the later stuff. Not a lot, not as well, but the early stuff is a uh, cast really well. So this got a forty-page book in on here, which I can't show you because a lot of new Dina, and it's got a bonus DVD, a Tinto Brass Maestro of Erotic Cinema documentary. Basically, it's a talking head documentary. Tinto Brass gets, sits down. And he asks him a bunch of questions, and he just like goes. He rambles on and on and on, just like me right now, you know. But he's talking about his movies, and uh, I really am a big fan of Tinto Brass. He's done a lot of fantastic work. He's one of those guys. Now, this is the guy that did Caligula. He uh, did a lot of movies. The Key was actually was a really fantastic film. So I always wanted Tinto Brass in my collection, and I've been eyeing up the set. I never had anything but called epics. And uh, again, uh, Parsonberg was really nice enough to uh, to get this one for me, and I was blown away. I watched the the whole. I've watched the whole set. I've watched uh, Cheeky. I think I've watched uh, Mono More Private. I haven't watched Black Angel yet, which I really want to watch because of the Nazi exploitation type of thing. Um, but I think it was uh, Private that I watched. And it's just really well done. I enjoyed the movies. And, uh, you know, it's not for everybody. This does have a lot of new Dean Adult situations. So this is not for younger viewers. So if I have younger viewers watching this right now, uh, this is one way to be a little bit older. And you'll uh, ex hopefully you'll, uh, look just beyond the new DNC like the other stuff that's in the film some of the, the film the lighting and the camera work and stuff that I uh, that I really get into but again I do like this for the pretty girls as well I'm not gonna lie so there we go over 600 viewers and a lot more coming this contest always the contest always bring the viewers which is cool so if you haven't checked out skin slips channel check it out now not just because of the contest check it out because he has good content because he works his butt off he does a bunch of like he hosts streams he he goes on streams he has a lot of stuff that he does and he just out there and doing stuff to uh, to make good videos for us so trust me i know i that's what we are that's what we're trying to do on youtube we're trying to entertain and uh hopefully people will notice us and uh watch us and we'll meet other people that are like us or uh that can get like uh, show us something uh new a new a new facet to ourselves that we may not have guessed or gotten or uh, I'm like looking around now and I'm, I'm serious this, this scavenger hunt was a great idea so I'm seeing lots of different movies that uh, I could have chosen so I'm like oh why didn't I choose that why didn't I choose Wolf Cop why didn't I choose uh, Door in the Darkness oh, why didn't I choose those well hmm that could be for another video but thanks for watching go over check out Skin Slips channel and uh, make sure you sub like subscribe and uh, for me right now it really is time for tea, and as usual, say hello to the great twin lord in the sky, it's Buddy the Phantom, the creature from the Block Lagoon. Um, for me right now, it's time for tea. Congratulations, Brandon, and uh, I am 
out of here. Have a good one.